Okay, so um, as we promised, we said uh, next we're going to talk about um, the T. So if you remember, um, El Nazad has this form where it's uh, x bar minus nu over sigma divided by square root of n. But then um, we said that sometimes we do not know sigma. We're not given sigma. And remember, sigma is the standard deviation in the population. It's a parameter. It's a real value. So we have to replace it with something. And um, actually, the best replacement of sigma is its estimate, and meaning the estimate that comes from the sample, which is s. Now, the minute you replace a parameter by its estimate, the z is no longer is a distribution. Rather, it becomes uh, what we had discussed, which is the t. And um, and if you remember, we said that the t um, has degrees of freedom that comes attached to it, and which is equal to n minus 1, which is actually coming from the standard deviation. Because if you remember, we said the formula of the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation, not the population standard deviation, is the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. And then you take the square root of all of that, right? Remember? And the reason you lose one degrees of freedom here is because you're using an estimate while you're estimating. Therefore, the t also has degrees of freedom. And then when we came to compare the t to the z, um, we said, let me write the z in a different colors to be able to compare it. Okay. So, um, we said that um, if we consider the z to have a normal distribution, then the t has a normal distribution as well. So, so far, they're exactly the same. If uh, we know that the z has a mu of z that is equal to 0, well, it turns out that the t has a mu of t that is equal to 0. So, so far, the mu and the t are exactly the same. Here's, what, here's the difference. We know that sigma of z is equal to 1, whereas the sigma of t is not equal to 1. And we said it's actually greater than 1. Yani if you were to put the z and the t one on top of the other, so here's the z. If you were to put the t, the t is going to be flatter than the z. Okay? Demon flatter. Um, the other thing that I mentioned in class is that, notice how I said greater than 1, I didn't say exactly equal to 2 or 3 or 4. And the reason is because that value changes. Changes according to what? Well, according to degrees of freedom. Which means one more difference between the z and the t is that the z is a unique distribution, whereas the t is a family of distribution. There are many. And they all depend on the degrees of freedom. So what happens is as your sample size increases, the degrees of freedom increases, and then the sigma of t starts to get closer and closer to 1, meaning t starts to look exactly more and more like the z. Chinek, if you remember in, in, in the class, I said to you, when you look at the t distribution, the last entry, don't call it infinity degrees of, call, of freedom, call it z because these values are actually the z values and so uh, let's do let's try to do a couple of, of exercises as, as a reminder of uh, how we do these things all right so um we said let's say for example i'm looking at uh fasting blood sugar and if i were to tell you that fasting blood sugar um, has a mean of uh, let me see, 9, and it has a sigma, let's say, of 2.4. And if I were to tell you that if you were to take, if you were to take uh, a sample of n equal, um, let's say, 16 people, what is the probability that the average of these 16 people is going to be greater than or equal to 8? Okay. So the question here, can I use the Z or should I use the T? Uh, do I meet the requirement? Obviously, since we, we have sigma, we're going to use the Z. But before we decide on using the Z, we need to know if we, if we meet the requirement. 
in other terms, is the STM normal? Is the STM normally distributed? And the answer is yes. Why is the STM normal? Well, because I told you somewhere, or maybe I didn't, maybe I should have said, uh, fasting blood sugar has a normal distribution. Okay? So even though the sample size is small, uh, the fasting blood sugar has a normal distribution, therefore the STM has a normal distribution. Therefore, I can apply the formula here, and then I can turn this into probability of Z greater than, and I'm going to use the Z formula, which is X bar, in this con example is 8, minus mu, in this example it's 9, divided by sigma, in this example it's 2.4, and it's itself divided by the square root of n, which is 4. Okay? So that means you're looking for z that is greater than, well, 8 minus 9 is minus 1 times 4. That's minus 4 divided by 2.4. Okay? So what, what I did simply is, because this is, I took this and I put it up here. And uh, I got a minus 4 divided by 2.4. Um, let's do it quickly. 2.4 divided, actually, 4, 4 divided by 2.4. It's 1.60. So it's the probability of z greater than negative 1.67. And you can actually get it. From the table I'm not gonna get it you know how to do that okay so here's an example where we did that using the Z now let's see how would I do it if uh, when would I use the T well I'm gonna keep everything the same except this time I'm going to say that we do not know uh, Sigma um, we're still going to take uh, n equal to 16 Okay, and I'm still going to ask, should the probability of x bar being greater than uh, 8? And since I don't have sigma, I'm going to say that, well, it turns out that s is equal to 2.2. .2. Okay, so here we're going to use the t. And uh, again, you ask yourself, is the sampling distribution of the mean normal and the answer has to be yes because we said that in fact the fasting glucose has a normal distribution so since the this sampling distribution of the mean is normal i can use either the z or the t depending upon if i have sigma i don't have sigma so i'm going to use the t okay so this becomes the probability of t greater than and then i'm going to write the exact same formula which is x bar minus mu so x bar is 8 from here mu is equal to 9 from here divided by s this time so here's my s which is 2.2 .2, and itself is divided by square root of n which is 4 okay so that gets me the probability of t greater than or equal well that's a negative one right here this is a negative one and I put the 4 up there, so that gives me a negative 4 divided by 2.2. .2. So the answer so far is looking like this is a probability of t greater than, and let me do the calculation here, 4 divided by 2.2 .2 is going to be equal uh, 1 point negative 1 point eight one eight i think uh eight one eight one eight one eight one okay now what i what i forgot to mention is the degrees of freedom now what are the degrees of freedom for this t well as we mentioned before it's n minus one so it's going to be 15 for all of them okay so now i have this t and i need to see if i can get this uh, the probability for that t degrees of freedom 15. So I'll open my t table. Just give me a second. All right, I probably need to open it from. OK. 
Okay. And uh, if you remember, for the T, we said, just going to make it a bit smaller. Trying to make it smaller. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for degrees of freedom 15. Here's degrees of freedom 15, and my t value is negative 1.8181. Now remember, we said that the table doesn't give you a negative, and the solution to that is you, if you want to get rid of the negative, well, you can flip that one. Or you can do one minus. Actually, flipping works for me. So actually, this becomes the probability of t degrees of freedom 15 less than I flipped, and then I'm also going to change the sign less than 1.8181. And this is perfect because the table gives me less than. So I go back to my table. So I'm looking degrees of freedom 15, and I'm searching for 1.81. There is no 18.1, but I have the 1.753 and the 2.13. So I know that my my probability is between these two. The area for this one is 95%, and for this one is 97.5%. So that means my probability is between greater than 0 0.95, but it's less than 0 0.975. Okay, so I hope this was a good review of everything that we've done so far. Um, next video is we're going to start new material.